Ladies and gentlemen, before we get into this very serious and sensitive topic here, I want to make a very strong disclaimer to dispel any potential for misunderstandings or anything of the sort. Rape is very serious, okay? This is something that should 150% be condemned to the fullest extent of the law possible. However, do you want to know something else that should be condemned alongside actual rape? False allegations of the such, because while things like rape and assault and anything that is under that umbrella is very, very serious, when you make false allegations of the sort, you end up destroying another person's life, even if they're 150% proven innocent beyond a shadow of a doubt, that person has to live with that type of damage for the rest of their life. Now, what we have here from The Guardian is an article that is titled, Eleanor Williams Jailed for Eight and a Half Years After Rape and Trafficking Lies. Now, this right here is an example of what should happen if you are caught in lies like this, okay? When you are trying to lie and deceive, when you're trying to destroy another person's life for whatever twisted reason that you tried to come up an excuse for, this is something that should happen. You should be punished because things like that are life-altering. Things like that destroy innocent people's lives. So let's get into the details of the article here. A woman has been jailed for eight and a half years after being found guilty of lying about being raped and trafficked by an Asian grooming gang and making false rape claims against a series of other men. Now, again, like I had mentioned at the start of this video, things like rape, things like assault, things like grooming should all be taken very fucking seriously, and if proven beyond a shadow of a doubt to be guilty, that right there should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. And anyone that has actually went through these type of horrible, horrible situations, I stand for you guys 150%, because it's things like this that should 100% be punished, and not to mention as well, okay, here's something else that I'd like to say real quick, and that is this. When you are making false allegations, not only are you destroying the reputation of innocent people that you're trying to falsely frame, but you are also taking away from actual victims who honestly went through these things. You know, you're making the actual victims look like fucking terrible, lying manipulators like this person is. Eleanor Williams, 22, from Barrow in Furnace, was convicted in January of nine counts of perverting the course of justice, sentencing her at Preston Crown Court on Tuesday. The judge, Mr. Justice Altham, said her allegations were complete fiction and criticized her for showing no significant signs of remorse. Oh my god. This individual already goes from being an absolutely over-the-top terrible person to something that goes well beyond description in that regard. Like, imagine having absolutely no remorse for trying to intentionally ruin lives of innocent people by making up egregious lies revolving around serious things like rape and grooming. Like, that is the type of person that, like, being completely sick in the head goes well beyond describing who this person is. Her claims went viral during a lockdown in May 2020 when she posted photographs of herself on Facebook covered in shocking bruises with a black eye and a partially severed finger. She said she had been beaten and made to attend sex parties by evil yet clever Asian men, mostly Pakistani business owners. What the fuck am I even reading here? My god. The allegations soon spread far beyond Cumbria and sparked a global solidarity campaign, Justice for Ellie, with more than 100,000 Facebook members. It had its own line of merchandise featuring a purple elephant and prompted rallies all over the UK amid allegations of a police cover-up. 
So many people were bamboozled and manipulated by what was eventually discovered to be a big pile of shit, i.e. lies. And what makes this even more infuriating, just that extra little pinch of salt on this already festering wound, is that this individual had merchandise, so now this person was profiting off of their lies. Cumbria police recorded 151 crimes linked to the case in 2020, including malicious communications and harassment, as well as criminal damage and public order offenses. Hate crimes tripled in Barrow that summer. In a letter to the judge on Tuesday, Williams maintained her innocence, but said she was sorry and devastated at how her Facebook posts affected Barrow. What? <laughs> What is she even saying here? I understand that it's your job to believe the jury's verdict, and that's okay. I know I have made some mistakes. I'm sorry. I know it's no excuse, but I was young and confused, she wrote. Oh. My. Days. Are. You. Fucking. Joking. Me. You mean to tell me- Okay, so first off, <laughs> you, you, you want to chalk up something as so serious as false rape allegations and false grooming allegations to it being some mistake and I was young and confused. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, you tried to ruin lives of innocent people based on lies you made up. It's not just these lies that have affected the people that you had directly falsely accused, but it also, like I said earlier, affects actual victims of these horrible instances. So shut the fuck up. Up. I'm not saying I'm guilty, but I know I have done wrong on some of this, and I'm sorry. I'm devastated at the trouble that has been caused in Borrow. If I knew what consequences would have come from that status, I never would have posted. Man, okay, you know what? <laughs> like, at this point, it's like, I don't know if I can continue going through this article here, because the more I get into it, the more pissed off I get. Like, the, I can't... I can't, okay, for the life of me, I can't figure out the type of mindset, the type of person you have to be to have these type of responses, trying to make excuses, saying there was some mistakes, and I was young and confused, and that, you know, you're sorry that, you know, you affected a place or something like that. It's like, you knew what you were doing, okay? Like, I'm not buying any of these excuses and explanations. Oh, and one other thing, ladies and gentlemen, this statement right here completely contradicts itself. So, this individual now has the term unintelligent, added to their already shitty resume on what type of person that they are. But anyways, let's keep on going. The judge said Williams held limited responsibility for the community tensions resulting from her Facebook post. Some community impact was foreseeable, he said, but he said the consequences of her lies for the criminal justice system were far-reaching, adding, there is a risk that genuine victims will be reluctant as a result of this to come forward. There you fucking go! Like, you see, that is a big-time example. I've said this earlier, ladies and gentlemen, in this article, but this right here further confirms I'm not the only one that has this type of mindset here, that actions like these are going to cause so much negative impact. Not just on those that you directly falsely accused, but the actual genuine victims that have actually truthfully went through these horrible instances. Despite the focus on Asian groomers, by the time Williams made her Facebook post, she had been charged with multiple accounts of perverting the course of justice. So, already this individual had a history prior to what we're talking about here. So, <laughs> that right there is also something else to think about, ladies and gentlemen. These included making false rape claims against three young white men, one of whom, Oliver Gardner, simply had the misfortune to ask her for a light in the street. Another, Jordan Trengrove, spent 73 days in prison on remand after she falsely accused him of raping and drugging her at knife point. I, I just don't, I don't even know what else I can say about this that either hasn't already been said, isn't blatantly obvious, or, you know, saying something that might actually get this video taken down via community guidelines violation or something like that, because there is so much that I wish to say that I don't think it's appropriate for this video. Like, you have got to be kidding me. You have absolutely 
got to be kidding me. So simply asking for someone for a light can get you in this type of trouble, can get you in this type of instance when you're just an innocent individual that just asked a simple fucking question. And not to mention as well to this Jordan individual spending 73 days of his life in prison over something he didn't do. Like, that's 73 days and some trauma, I will definitely confidently say that he most likely had some trauma added to that. That's stuff that is irreversible, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is irreversible damage, you know? Like, not only did you take time away from this individual that he ain't ever gonna get back, but you also end up putting scars in place on those people that will not heal. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus Christ. But Williams reserved her wildest allegations for a borrowed businessman, Mohammed Ramzan, known locally as Mo Rami. Ramzan, now 43, told Preston Crown Court he had only met Williams once, briefly at a family party. Williams said he was, in fact, the head of an international grooming gang who first had sex with her at age 12 or 13 and then trafficked her and dozens of other girls around Northwest England and abroad. I got no comment about this. Like, are you shitting me? Tengrove, Gardner, and Ramzan all said they tried to kill themselves as a result of being falsely accused. Oh my god. That is... That, reading that out loud, just honestly, that hurts my heart. That hurts my heart. Reading that, like, so, upon being falsely accused, they were driven to that point of desperation that they thought that the only way out was to unalive themselves. Because of this fucking bitch right here. Like I said earlier, there is so much that I wish I could say, but I don't want this video to be taken too far and be taken down because of some type of community guidelines, but... Oh my god, like I'm really trying to maintain my composure. Tengrove and Ramzan were in court on Tuesday to see Williams sentenced. Outside court, jurors, who had been invited to return for the hearing, hugged the men and shook their hands. Now, that had to feel at least a little bit on the better side for those guys, because they probably felt like that despite them being 100% innocent in this, they were probably thinking that, the, you know, that they, they had to live in fear, that they had to live in protective custody, that they would not be able to walk the same streets as the regular average civilian, but the fact that they were being hugged and stuff like that, it, it, I guess it seems like symbolically that they haven't lost their place in society, but no doubt, this right here definitely had a negative and, dare I say, permanent impact on their psyche. Williams thanked the judge after he passed sentence, then waved goodbye to her sister, Lucy, and mother, Allison Johnston. Lucy gave evidence for the prosecution after Williams claimed that she had been trafficked by Ramzan to Amsterdam and sold at a brothel to the highest bidder. In fact, the sisters had gone together to Amsterdam to celebrate Williams' 18th birthday, so... It seems like that Lucy, her sister, was in on this as well. So hopefully with that revelation, Lucy gets charged as well for not only being an accessory in this situation, but aiding and abetting in said situation as well, you know? Like, there's gotta be more to this, right? Williams had six mobile phones she used to create fake identities and manipulated the Snapchat accounts of real men she had met via the dating app Tinder or subscribers to her account on OnlyFans, the erotic photo sharing site, to make them look like they were Asian abusers. So... This right here kind of makes me wonder if there is also racial motivation behind this, because I'm seeing the word Asian being thrown around here quite a few times so far in this article. Police were able to prove that one Snapchat account that purported to belong to Tengrove, and which seemed to be goading her about the rapes, had in fact been created using the Wi-Fi at the Williams family home on Walney Island in Barrow. Williams gave police a list of 60 girls, half from Cumbria and half from elsewhere, who she said had been pimped out by Ramzin's gang, but when police knocked on the girls' door, they were met with blank 
faces. Oh, Jesus Christ. It honestly just gets worse and worse here, but I am kind of now at the point where I have nearly ran out of things to say in response to all of this. It's just all fucking insane. One of them, Chloe, not her real name, told the Guardian of her confusion at being confronted with a suggestion she had been groomed and abused with Williams, who was in the year above her at Walney School in Barrow. I had the police round out of the blue. They said I was named by Ellie Williams, that I was at these parties in Morecambe and Preston. Not the case at all, said Chloe, now 21. She said she had been on one night out with Williams and, though she knew her to say hi, was not a close friend. It's very weird how she mentioned my name. So now it seems like that she is trying to drag other people into this situation as well. Even so, Chloe was as shocked as everyone else in Barrow when she saw Williams' Facebook post in May 2020. She still struggles to believe her injuries were self-inflicted as a forensic pathologist concluded they were, with a hammer Williams bought from Tesco a few days earlier. Chloe bought a Justice for Ellie t-shirt and joined several solidarity protests. Everyone had something of Justice for Ellie. Everyone. And if it wasn't on you, it was on your car or on the front of your house. She says she feels stupid to have joined the rallies for someone who made up so many lies. It got nasty very quickly. Considering what was spoken on so far and considering that this individual was proven to be a liar... I definitely think that those injuries were indeed self-inflicted, and you have a forensic pathologist to conclude that as well. Trengove had rapist spray-painted on the side of his house. Ramzan received more than 500 death threats and had to leave Barrow for months. A reporter from the local Mail newspaper also left the town temporarily on police advice after receiving dozens of threats in response to a report she wrote about Williams' first court appearance. This is definitely one of those things that definitely not only affected a lot of people, I mean, that much we know is obvious, but... It seems like that nobody was safe. Like, it wasn't just those people that were falsely accused, but I guess anyone that even had remotely any type of association or any type of, I guess you could say, news type of interest, for a lack of better terminology, they weren't safe. Like, that right there just shows another example of the dangers of... Of situations like these. Indian restaurant owners in the town repeatedly had their windows smashed after a list circulated on Snapchat purporting to show businesses complicit in Williams' abuse. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, the pile does. Like, what the fuck? One Muslim restaurateur who asked not to be named said he lost at least 80,000 pounds worth of custom after being named on the list. Orders dropped from 70 to 80 a night to two or three, and he was pursued down the street by people on skateboards who used the P word and sprayed beer in his face. So I guess you could say that this right here is the spiderweb effect from making false allegations and that right there stems into creating more and more danger, more and more ridiculous, over-the-top, destructive, negative situations all because of some dumbass that decided to lie and slander people for no reason. During Williams' sentencing hearing at Preston Crown Court, Judge Altham asked if the prosecution was asking him to sentence on the basis that the offenses were motivated by racial hatred. Jonathan Sandyford Casey said no, noting the jury had heard evidence of Williams' affectionate and emotional relationship with at least one Asian man. Well, here's the thing, okay, is that... Based on how this person is, based on the capability of the manipulation and the lies that this person can make, 
I definitely have a hard time believing anything that this person is saying at this point. The court heard Williams continue to maintain her innocence and that two psychiatrists had been unable to diagnose her with a disorder, but one, Dr. Lucy Bacon, said she had experienced complex post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of childhood trauma. Now, let me make something abundantly clear right here, okay? Just because you had past trauma doesn't excuse you when it comes to pulling off shit like this that ruins lives of innocent individuals. I'm sorry that you had stressful and post-traumatic stress disorder from childhood events, but that does not give you the fucking right to do this type of shit to innocent people. What, did they have to suffer just because you did? No. And that, thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, is the conclusion of this article and thus the conclusion of this video. This was one of the hardest videos I've ever had to make and one of the most hardest and frustrating topics that I've had to talk about. Now, this is something that definitely deserves spotlight, 100%, because things like this are not okay, and when you have things like this taking place, they deserve to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. And I hope that this instance right here is made an example, a made a legislative example across the board that if you make false allegations of rape, of trafficking, of grooming, etc., that you should face to the fullest extent of the law massive punishment. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have to say here. What are your guys' thoughts and opinions about what we talked about? This was a very, 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 very heavy topic without a shadow of a doubt. With that said, guys, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your time as well in viewing this video. Have yourself a damn good one, you beautiful people. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. I will see you next time.